All right, everyone, we are back now. I believe this is round six in the SRL Championship here at one of my favorite and one of my best tracks in the game, Abu Dhabi. Man, I really do love this track. I always have, especially with the new changes to the track that are in this year's game now. I just think it makes the track even better. I think it's one of the S-tier tracks for league racing. And going into our final qualifying run, we absolutely bend it in the wall because we're too aggressive on the throttle. <laughs> but I... My recording didn't catch the uh, first lap I made. It was a very good lap, I thought. Um, so on this second lap, I knew if I was to beat it, that I would have to go all out. So I went for it, didn't work out, but no harm, no foul as we remain on the pole and no one else would go on to beat this lap. So it would be yet another pole position for us this season and we continue our trend of being fast and getting a lot of pole positions. I almost said getting every pole position that I remembered last time out at Imola, we actually didn't get pole position. We had a terrible lap <laughs> and we got P2 in that one and that was a race that we want to forget. So hopefully we can have a much better race here at Abu Dhabi. Like I said, a track I love. Yeah, it's a track I always look forward coming to. Coming into the race now, starting on pole, Manuel Lito is second behind us. Uh, and yeah, same strategy as always. If you guys don't know what I'm doing by now, then you haven't been paying attention to the videos. <laughs> same strategy for the same reason. Hopefully get another good launch off of the line. Random catchphrases were underway. It looks like Manuel Leo gets a decent start ahead of us, but we get a better start on the hards and we will lead into turn one on the hard tires. Great start for us. Uh, Max Mulder coming up behind in the Mercedes. He won last time out in his first F1 uh, class win. He's won a lot of GT3 races. But he got his first F1 win last time out at Imola. And just like in round one of Bahrain, he's being very aggressive off the start. He's probably on a softer tire. So I'm going to use a little bit of ERS here that I wasn't planning on using just to ensure that I stick ahead of him. Um, I'm, you know, he could get me on the straight, spending a lot of ERS, but I'm confident if I can just get myself in the lead into sector three, where the more, you know, there's more time to be gained, that I can comfortably keep my lead in lap one. You know, a beautiful race this is, you know, starts at sunset, fades into night. I just think it's a really cool concept for the race. I love it. Uh, this corner right here, advice I have for everyone is they always keep your line tight. Short, keep the track shorter, makes it easier. Uh, traction's gonna be hard no matter what, whether you take a wider line or a shorter line, so you might as well make the track shorter. And especially if you're battling into that corner, whoever has the inside quarter is just gonna wear, win out because the you have such a shorter path around the corner because it's such a long corner and the traction's gonna be rough on the exit. So the person on the outside can't really get aggressive to try to outpower you either, so. You'll see that in another video coming up when I get to this track in Hyperdrive that I really use that strategy to full effect in that race. you got to stay tuned for that one because it is an absolute banger. And we successfully lead the first lap, and we are looking good to have another race where we cruise off on our own. But anything can happen. This is SRL. Lots of safety cars tend to happen. And all you need is one safety car to happen at a really shitty time to kind of ruin your race. So, so far we've done everything that we needed to do. Uh, great qualifying. Well, except for the lap you guys saw. But, you know, we got our pole position. We got a great start. We're on the optimal strategy. Everything's looking up for us so far. Bri is out of the session early. And it would not be a safety car. That's what I was hoping to see <laughs> early on. Advancing now to the beginning of lap four. Max Muller doing a decent job of sticking with us on the medium tire. Dion Stahl retires from the session. And that is going to bring out a caution. Is it virtual or a full safety car? We will see here in a second. And it is a full safety car being deployed here early in this race. It was way too early for us to pit onto the medium tires, so we stayed out on our hards. Max Motor also stayed out behind us, and we will be leading the safety car restart as we've jumped ahead now. This is concluding lap six, and we will be starting lap seven. So that ticked about three laps off of the race. Again, uh, always remember to keep your temperatures up at the beginning of a restart so you can physically see when your tires are back into optimal temperature so you know without a shadow of doubt when you can go back to fully pushing off of a restart because the last thing you want to do 
is, like I always say, be a hero going for a couple tenths and ruin your entire race in the process. We get a great launch, a little bit of gap to Max Motor behind. We know he's going to be aggressive with the ERS here early, so I'm going to use plenty of ERS on this straight to ensure that I hold my lead, hold this position, and I can get right back to what I was doing before the safety car. And I'm starting to build a little bit of a gap, open up this lead, and just take control of this race. Now, the last thing that could happen to really fuck us over at this point is if a safety car comes out kind of now in the window where they would be able, the medium runners, that is, to take uh, a set of hard tires to the end, but we wouldn't be able to take the medium tires to the end. So if another safety car came out, like right now, and then that was the only remaining safety car for the entire race, you know, that's that window where we could kind of get fucked, which you guys saw previously in my uh, hyperdrive race at Zanford. We have an amazing race. Safety car came out an awful time for our strategy, and everyone that was on higher tires just kind of got fucked in that race. But, you know, that is what it is. Like I always say, it's irritating as shit how often it happens to us. But hopefully it doesn't happen here today. Especially on a track like this where I feel like, you know, I had a really big advantage in my pace compared to the field. It's, I think this was one of my biggest pace advantages I had so far this season. You know, I've had races so far where we've won and we've had a good pace advantage. But I feel like here it was the biggest. Not even as much so in qualifying, but in, in the race pace as well. Because I had a great qualifying session and that was on a race setup. You know, I don't run quality setups on any track at this point. So yeah, I was feeling really good going into this one, and I would be pretty annoyed if you know some bullshit happened that would cause me to lose this one. We have a caution, and it's going to be another safety car. And that, again, is not what I want to see. I just want some green flag running for a little bit so I can pull out a gap and just, you know, race the race and not spend another 10 minutes of my life behind Burt Mylander. But that's what we're going to be doing here. And again, according to my calculations of how long the tires can go, I could not take the mediums to the end. Max Mulder pit behind us, so now we got Manuelito behind us in second place. Remember, temperature's up on the restart, and I will get ready for a launch. I always have planned out how I'm going to launch, and I try to do it in a way to catch my opponents as off guard as possible. And I always mix up my restarts, so people can't anticipate what you're going to do based off of what you did on the last restart. And getting a good restart, you know, it's a, it's really important. I think it goes underrated how important it is to get a good restart off a safety car restart when you're a leader. You know, it can be the difference of be, someone being right up your ass as soon as you cross the line and having a comfortable lead, which makes more of a difference than even that initial couple tenths gap. It also makes the difference of how much ERS you can save. Um, on that first lap, which equals more time down the road. You know, it really, the, that time you end up saving and the ERS you saving really does add up. So those restarts are super important, you know. So when you're the leader and everyone else has to react to you, you have to take advantage of that situation. Obviously, you got to make sure it's a legal restart where you're keeping a smooth pace the whole time. But there's little things you can do to make them think like, oh, he's going to launch now. But going at not you know, really the anticipated time, while at the same time mixing it up if you have multiple restarts, can be a key sometimes to victory. Um, I know this was before I was making videos about all my races, but I remember in F1 2020, I had a lot of restarts that I started from, like I, I led, that really decided races because they were late safety cards, but because I was able to mix up my restarts and catch people off guard, you know, it gave me just the gap that I needed to be able to pull out the winds on tracks that, you know, are very easy to follow and overtake on. We pull forward to lap 16 now. I see a caution ahead. It's an Aston Martin off the track there. And as we come across the line, there's still a yellow back there, a local yellow. But here in a second, you're going to see it upgrade to a full safety car. God damn it. <laughs> yeah, it always, it, it, it's kind of funny, you know, like I always say, it's just comedic how my luck is. You know, you look at all the races so far this season, the one race that I haven't led the whole time was Imola, and we don't get a fucking safety car. Now again, I'm leading again, and it's been nothing but safety car. You know, it just... Re try to remember that as the races go on in this season and take note how many times the safe how often safety cars out 
come out when I'm leading. And all of a sudden, if I'm not leading, you know, everyone all of a sudden is like, oh, shit, guys, Logan's not leading. Better make sure we behave on track and not spin on every lap. <laughs> yeah, safety cars come out. We are now definitely within the window to make our pit stop. So it doesn't fuck us over in terms of the strategy, but again, it nullifies the advantage that we have been working hard to build the entire race. So we have to start from square one again, get another good restart, and hopefully not make any mistakes or have someone drive really good behind us and have a chance to fight us. Now we are getting ready for our third restart from the lead in this race on the medium tire now. It's gonna be about 10 to go when we cross the line, starting lap 20. We will see when we launch here. We kind of give a little bit of hesitation. One more swerve. And we're going to hit the gas immediately off of swerving. When the last two times I've swerved and then waited and then went. So again, mixing up my timing's good. And you can see how well it worked there. I got a huge gap. Better part of a second by the time we even crossed the line. No one's on the soft tires behind me to threaten me for the rest of this race. And immediately I put myself in a fantastic position to cruise to the end of this race. Again, taking control of the race. Now hopefully we don't get ourselves a fourth safety car and I have to do it all over again. And finally, some good luck for me in the form of a safety car not coming out for the rest of the race. We easily pulled a gap to the rest of the field, flexed our pace advantage, come across the line for another win this season. And, yep, that's exactly what we need for both the drivers and constructors. Pulling out big wins. Our teammate pulls up the P2. At this point, you know, with him joining this team since Austria, it's pretty obvious that we are going to run away with this constructors' championship with absolutely no competition. I kind of feel bad for the rest of the teams. You know, there is not any bit of a fight in constructors this season. We are going to put up like six, seven hundred points. It's going to be outrageous. Um, yeah, we get another great win here. I know it wasn't the most exciting race for you guys to watch, but you know, it was. Uh, that's the kind of race I like, honestly, because it means I played really well. I prepared really well. This is a track I like. This is a track I'm good at. We had the we qualified pole. We were in the lead the whole time. Even though there was three safety cars, we kept control of the race from start to finish and a really great performance by us. You know, a race being boring like this when we're racing, when, we're, when we lead the whole time, just in a way just shows how well we prepared and how well we performed in this race. You've got to perform well to make a race boring like this. You know, a la Sebastian Vettel from the 2010 to 2013 era where he had races. You know, it would be lights out he'd pull out like a 10 second gap and just cruise this we didn't quite get the 10 second gap nine and a half seconds but another decent gap for the win and this is what i want to do every race but you know we've had some bad luck in some races previously like getting hit in the rear at imola getting take out by a disqualified car in austria but hopefully we can have some more races like this where you know we can show our pace advantage and pick up some more wins. So yeah, that's going to be about it for this one. Great win on a track I love. No, not it wasn't the most exciting race for you guys, but I guarantee you that there's still some races I have yet to post that are the exact opposite of what this one. I can guarantee that. So until, until then, we'll catch you guys in the next one. It will most likely be the next round of Hyperdrive, I believe, which was at Singapore, the penultimate round of that season, and another track that I absolutely love, and definitely an eventful race, so stay tuned for that one, because it's going to be a banger.